pretty horrendously wet day today. Really cold, wet. Luckily I've got all my rain gear. And anyway, the tide's on the way out and I've seen what looks like part of a buckle down here. There we are, look. I think that's what it is. Yeah, pretty, isn't it? Pretty fragment of buckle. I'll have a closer look later. Nice one. And then, as I stood there on the windy foreshore and looked down, I saw what looked like possibly a coin down between these two rocks. Well, it is a coin. It's very, very worn. Oh, I can see. Look, I can see a very, very faint, ghostly Victoria on there. I think it's Victoria. Can you just catch that? Yeah, there she is. This coin has seen better days. It's wafer thin. Down here, I've seen some glass poking out of the mud. I am, of course, hoping that it's an entire bottle. Now, what are the chances? What are the chances of that, I wonder? Let's see, let's see. Let's see if we're going to be lucky. It would be pretty amazing if there is a whole bottle in here. I hardly dare hope to um, imagine that there is. There's a really deep um, punt there. I'm going to turn my camera off a minute and do a little bit more digging around it. I obviously don't want to damage it, so I'll be back in a moment. Oh my gosh, you know what? So far, it's good news. The only bad news is that today I decided to leave my rucksack and my gloves and everything else in the car because I've got a bit of a neck ache. Um, but I think, you know what? I think we might be in luck. I think it's a tiny onion bottle. I can feel the neck there. This is, oh my gosh, look. Okay, look, we're just gonna pull it out now. <gasps> oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing, <laughs> I can't tell you. Oh my gosh, this is absolutely beautiful. Oh, heavens, what a stunning little bottle. It's like a twin to my other onion bottle. Oh, oh my gosh, I feel so blessed. I can't even begin to tell you how blessed I feel. I just thank you, River Thames. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And you know, to think that whoever threw this away, this probably dates to the 17th century, but whoever threw this away, if they could have imagined the excitement that somebody was going to get from their old bottle. <laughs> okay, well, well I'm gonna have to go wash it now. It's so typical, isn't it? The day I didn't bring anything to put anything in. Right, let's go wash it off. Um, I'm gonna take a photograph first. I'm just blown away. Blown away. Blown away. Yeah. 
sorry for the exaggerations, but I just, just am. You just don't find things like this every day on the foreshore. This is just ab absolutely extraordinary. Now, as you could tell, I was so very excited that I was hoping that there might be some other mudlarks close by that I could share this wonderful find with. And so luckily there was. And so thank you very much to Alessio, who is London Madlark on Instagram, who filmed me after I found the bottle and I was able to share my excitement with him. Oh, look at this beautiful, beautiful, perfect little onion bottle. It's a, a once in a lifetime experience to pull something like this out of the mud. Probably dates to the late 17th century, but the person who dropped it would never have imagined that someone could get so excited about this, but this is just so beautiful. Thank you, River Thames. Okay, let's rinse this beautiful bottle. Let's rinse it off. I think I must be dreaming. I, I just I just think I must be having the most incredible dream and it's just a tiny bit broken on the top. Oh my goodness me. This is extraordinary. Just look at this. <laughs> oh my gosh. What are the chances of that? Oh my gosh. Look at it. Just look at it. It's extraordinary. It's very similar to my other one at home, except the neck is longer. So I'm guessing the same sort of date. Late 17th century, probably. Well, 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 if I don't find anything else today, or even indeed for the rest of the month, I will not mind. Let's see if we can have the same success with this pipe here. Ah, no. Oh, but never mind. Right, well, after that excitement, I've just seen something poking out of the mud here. And I want to see what it is, if anything. look. Oh, <laughs> it is a vulcanite bottle stopper. There we go. Well, the tide is on the way in. It stopped raining. And I am going to go home. I'm so excited with this little baby that I've got safely in my pouch, like a little kangaroo. <laughs> There's my baby there, see? So I'm gonna go home and take a closer look at this glorious bottle. I have just got back home. I've uh, dried out a little bit and I couldn't resist trying to get the mud out of this bottle straight away. And I have actually managed to do it, which is brilliant because I was kind of worried that if the mud dried, I was going to find it harder. So with a very small paintbrush and some wire, I've managed to empty all the mud out of this lovely bottle. So I'm interested to see if, as it dries more during the course of the day, I'm interested to see if there's going to be any iridescence that starts flaking off, as often is the case. Um, and over here is its twin, except obviously it's got a shorter neck. So later on, I'll do a better comparison between the two. We'll put them side by side and they can meet each other properly. But for now, I'm going to put this down safely somewhere where it's not going to topple off um, and see what happens as it dries. But isn't it amazing? 
And it's funny, actually, it holds more water than you would think. I'll actually show you later. I'll fill it up and then pour it into a glass and you can see how much it would have held. Or it does hold. And so whilst I bask in the afterglow and do some more research about this bottle, come with me and see what I found the following day. It's another very wet and windy experience and so there will be some narration to save your ears. So what have we got here? I can see a round edge protruding out of the mud just there. Now could it be a bone or I don't know. It seems to have some kind of groove in it. Maybe it could be some kind of little wheel. Can you see the groove just there? Or maybe it's a shoe. Let's see what it could be. Let's start to try and get it out of the mud. Maybe it's a shoe? No, it feels too hard to be a shoe. And so... I can actually see a little hole there. And so it's definitely not a shoe. It's not a bone. What can it be? What can it be? Let's get it out. Let's leverage it out there. And it is something round. Okay, look at that. Now what's it made out of? I think that it's wood and it does have this groove going around the outside, which indicates that maybe it's some kind of pulley from some kind of pulley system on a ship, maybe. I shall take that home with me and wash it off and let's see what we can find out about it. Oh. It's quite interesting. It's got some lettering on it. Let's give it a little wash. Do you like our lettering? Fratat and Ross, I think. Oh, it's interesting, isn't it? Take a look at that later. What can I see down here? next to this little piece of mud. I thought that might be something for a minute, but it's not. No, it's a coin. It looks really faded. I'm not sure we're going to be able to identify that. Oh, I can see. I can see somebody on there. That, I don't think that's Victoria though. That could be a George. Gosh, that's so worn. It's been subjected to so many, so many tides, hasn't it? It's definitely somebody, looks like a man. Probably a George. Look what I've just seen down here. Signs of a pipe. The stem isn't very long, but it certainly looks like the bowl is all there. 
she is. It's a plain one, but there's a really nice mark on that heel. Now, that's not an initial, but it's like a little square. I wonder what's on the other side. And it looks like the same on the other side. Now that bowl should fade to a nice creamy colour in not too long a time, now that it's out of the mud. Here comes the tide. As I'm wandering along this windy foreshore, my attention has been caught by this strange looking large lump of green glass just sitting here on the rock, covered in barnacles. It looks like a massive great big piece of jelly. It's such a curious colour and it reminds me of some uranium glass that I've found in the past. So I'm going to take that home with me and check it out and see if it is uranium glass. I'm just wondering what on earth it's doing sitting here on the foreshore. And what was it? What was it part of? It's a huge great chunk of glass. Seedy. Take that. Throw it away. This. Let's take a look at this. What is this? Oh, <laughs> one hour delay. One hour delay. It's quite nice, actually. It's a metal sign. Do you know what? I might have to take that. I can put it in my kitchen when dinner is running late. <laughs> well, this is going to be fun carrying that along. Thank you very much for watching my video. Welcome to my studio. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying healthy, happy and safe. And thank you once again for sharing in the joy of my onion bottle find. Being able to share that with all of you is brilliant because it just magnifies that marvellous joy. And so why? Why all this joy for finding a broken bottle? Well, that's a very good question. I have had to ask myself that. I suppose it's something about um, the fact that it's just so old. I mean, this particular bottle, which I'm going to show you again in a moment, is from about 1720 or so. And it's just amazing to think that somebody back in the early 18th century was walking around with this bottle and was probably the last person who touched it before I found it. That, and also the fact that it is very rare to find something like that on the foreshore. And it was just such a huge surprise. Um, that's the joy of mudlarking, I think. You go down to the river, you don't know what you're going to find, but you know you'll find something, even if it's just a button or a bottle stopper. And then sometimes you just find something really special. And so here it is, my precious bottle and I'm not going to touch it with my hands because I don't want the iridescence to come off. Um, but here we are. Here it is in all its glory. It has dried out and I can tell you that this bottle holds precisely 300 millilitres of liquid, which is round about that. So more actually than it looks. And it does have a really deep punt this bottle, really deep bit underneath the base there. And um, what else can I say about it? Yes, it's it's uh, a little bit broken at the top there. And thank you very much to my mudlarking friend, Phil, who helped me to date it. He reckons that it's probably an onion to mallet transitional bottle, which dates it to about 1720 to 1725. And so let's compare it to my previously found onion bottle, which was broken when I found it.
I've been so fortunate to find two onion bottles. The last one I found, you may have seen my video where I found it, it was broken into about seven or eight pieces, but luckily I was able to stick it together. So let's have a look at them together. The, the sibling onion bottles. Isn't that a beautiful sight? And you can see how different they are. So this one here, which was broken when I found it, this one dates apparently to about 1690. And so this one here, the transitional neck feature here, um, dates to about 1720. So there's not much between them. And you can see sort of difference in shape there. So what did they have in them? Well, probably wine, brandy, maybe rum. And also it could be that it's a sort of a pharmacy bottle because it's very small. These are mini onion bottles. They're pretty rare. So I'm very, very lucky to have found these. And I wonder how long this would have survived because people would have walked on it. Um, eventually it would have washed out, broken. And so, yeah, it was just, Great timing, it was, it was really quite miraculous to find it. And isn't it wonderful? So 1720, 1690. So Georgian, so what was going on in the world or in England or the UK in 1720? Well, King George I was on the throne. And actually, King George I wasn't a very nice person. He imprisoned his wife because he suspected her of being unfaithful. He imprisoned his wife in a castle and 32 years later, she died there. He wasn't a very nice man. But anyway, besides that, um, what was going on in Georgian times, insofar as what they were eating and drinking, let's stay on that theme. Well, gin became very popular in around about 1720, 1730 onwards. It was the gin craze because it was very, very cheap. And so lots of people drank gin, especially poor people. And they drank it to forget about their troubles and their woes. And there's a series of prints by Hogarth to illustrate some of the awful, sad things that went on during that gin craze. So gin was very, very popular, far more popular than it should have been. Turtle soup in Georgian times was very popular. This is a turtle bone, which I found on the foreshore a few years ago. And this turtle who owned this bone was probably put in a soup. And in Georgian times, it was all the rage. You had to have turtle soup at a dinner party. So that was that. Uh, wig curlers, wig curlers. Here is another mudlarking find from Georgian times and very fine curls made with these wig curlers was very popular at that time for men and women. But you can see the Georges with their ringlets and would have been done with these clay wig curlers, which were made using the same clay as clay pipes. And talking of clay pipes, what kind of clay pipes were they smoking at around about the time of this onion bottle? Well, something very much like this. So um, yes, this is what they would have been smoking whilst they were having a little glass of wine from their onion bottle. What else have I got that's Georgian? Oh yes, some Staffordshire type slipwear, which you will probably have seen on the Thames foreshore if you're a mudlark. This was used extensively also in Georgian times for pie dishes and um, tart dishes. And it's really funny, actually. I, I was searching for some. I knew I had some in my collection, but I only just noticed when I was looking at this a moment ago that there's actually some lettering on, on here. And I had not noticed that before. So there you are. You could have had your onion bottle on the table, your pie dish made of Staffordshire type slipwear, your nice clay pipe, maybe a wig curler or two that you forgot to take out the night before, and a big steaming tureen of turtle soup. Um, so there we are, do you get the picture? Just visualizing that Georgian type table and in the center would be the onion bottle. I have tried to find some old paintings with onion bottles in, but I can't 
actually find any. So I don't know if, if you're able to find any old paintings that feature these onion bottles, please let me know. I have found a few modern contemporary paintings, but I'm looking for old original ones. So I can't say much more about the onion bottle. Um, again, thank you to Alessio, who is London Madlock on Instagram. He was there, I was looking around for somebody to show. I just wanted to share my, my happiness and he was there and everybody got very excited. There were a few other people there. Two, Muddy Vardy, there was uh, Michal, um, Tommy, um, I think that's it. But we, we, were all, um, we were all very, very happy about the onion bottle and Alessio took that footage of me. So thank you for that, Alessio, that, that's really brilliant. Um, so that's it for the onion bottle now. Um, I shall calm down about it and put it back in its place and I shall very much enjoy looking at it in years to come and wondering whose bottle it was, who last touched it before me. Now I also found a little piece of buckle on the foreshore and I think that that is also a Georgian style uh, buckle part there so it's all very Georgian themed this video today, um, early Georgian, because I have got a coin here which I also believe to be Georgian. Now it is very very thin, in fact both of the coins that I've found on this video are almost completely dissolved into nothing um, and this one here I do believe is a King George the second half a crown, not oh, half a crown, no, that's wishful thinking, sorry, a halfpenny, a King George the second halfpenny. And King George the second came to the throne in 1727, so he was also around at the time when the person who last touched this onion bottle was around. The other coin which I found is a Queen Victoria coin and also this is just terribly terribly thin and worn as well but I did clean her off because it was very tempting to I wanted to get a better look at her face it's a young Victoria head there I can't see the date but I think it might date to around about 1880 and it's funny to think that if somebody in Victorian times had found that bottle they may, as, may have well been excited as well because it would have been well over a hundred years old. So uh, when, you, when you think about it like that, it's quite funny, isn't it, to think that a Victorian person might have also got excited about finding the onion bottle. Maybe not quite as excited as me, but maybe a bit excited. So that's that for the two coins. What else have I got here? Um, oh, I did find a Vulcanite bottle stopper and it's Copps Brewery. They were founded in 1890 and they were the first brewery in the UK to brew non-alcoholic beer. So that is the claim to fame of Copps Brewery, founded in 1890, 200 years after the date of this little onion bottle. I'm going to refer to everything now. Um, and comparing, comparing the tapes and whatever to these onion bottles. This is the onion bottle video. They are the, the centerpiece of the video. What else have I got here? Um, what else have I got here? Oh, this funny little round thing here, which initially I thought was actually metal and was going to be part of a, of a telescope or something a little older. It is in fact something from a shop in India. It's from Pratap and Brothers from 23335 Zavari Bazaar in Bombay. And so we know that it dates back to at least 1995 because that's when Bombay was renamed Mumbai. I have looked them up and it appears that they uh, some kind of jewellery shop and if you look closely here I will put a photograph up there is a little a little man there not sure who he is so an interesting little piece of history and I wonder what it is doing 
in the River Thames. Who threw it in there? And apparently they're still going. I did look them up. It seems that they are still going in the Zavary Bazaar. Now, oh, right, must not forget this, this round piece of wood here with these grooves. Well, it looks that it has to be something to do with, with some kind of pulley system, doesn't it? From a ship, I would guess. Do you have any thoughts on that? All you experts on ship parts? I did find a larger one, actually, very recently when I was out with my friend Fran. A much larger one, but it's the same sort of thing, except that the hole in the middle is blocked up with some kind of metal, but um, yeah, obviously used for the same kind of thing. So yeah, if you have any details about these, please let me know. Um, you've seen that I... No, you haven't seen actually. Sorry, you haven't seen. But I did keep the sign. I did keep the one hour late sign. Um, you will see it very shortly. Um, I lugged it home and uh, yeah, I lugged it home because it's kind of kind of fun. Um, it's, uh, it's actually in my bathroom at the moment and you'll see it very shortly because you're going to go in my bathroom in a minute, believe it or not. And the reason you're going to go in my bathroom is because we are going to test out this piece of glass to see if it is indeed uranium glass. So let's take a little trip to my bathroom. Well, hello. Welcome to my bathroom. Somewhere I don't suppose you ever imagined you would be. But here we are in my bathroom, although you wouldn't think so because it does have driftwood sacked in the corner and pottery under the sink. But I'm sure I can't be the only person, or tell me I'm not the only person that has a bathroom like that. So we are here in this bathroom because it's very dark when the light is off, so that's good. It's probably the best dark room in the house. And I'm here with the chunk of glass which I suspect is uranium, but I'm not quite sure because believe it or not, I haven't tested it out yet. This is the first time that I'm going to be testing it here with you. And I've got my UV torch and we're about to find out. So are you ready? I'm going to turn the light off. And now it's all dark, but I'm still here, even though you can't see me and the camera is probably thinking, what's going on? So now I'm about to turn on my UV torch which is here. And let's see if this lump of glass is uranium glass. And here it is. And I would say that that is a big yes. Just look at that, that glowing slab of glass. Definitely, definitely Uranium glass. What it came from, that I am not too sure. What do you think? Maybe the base of a lamp? Pretty spectacular. So, as suspected, it is uranium glass which was very popular, or made very popular in the mid 19th century. Um, I actually do have some cups and saucers, some old cups and saucers made with uranium glass. And so it is apparently um, hardly radioactive at all, which is quite a relief. And let's hope that that is also the case for this lump of glass. Now I'm just going to check to make sure I haven't forgotten anything because that is my speciality. Often I go through everything and then I remember at the last minute that I've actually forgotten something really important. So no, I do believe that I have remembered everything. And so there were just a couple of other things that I wanted to say. Um, one of them is I do have a little giveaway here. Now, if it wasn't for the tides, 
If it wasn't for the tides, us mudlarks would not be able to go down onto the Thames foreshore to find anything. There wouldn't be any low tides, there wouldn't be any high tides, the mud would not be exposed and we wouldn't have the opportunity in that magical time of low tide to go down and see what pieces of history we can find. And recently I was sent a book by Emir Martin Roberts called Tides, a very short introduction. I must admit that tides have always fascinated me. It's um, it's just so uh, complicated to, to imagine how all that works. And so this is perfect. It's a little book, a short introduction about tides. And it's by David George Bowers and Emir Martin Roberts. And they kindly have given me a book here to do a giveaway with. And I'll also put up on the screen where you can buy a copy of this book if you'd like to find out more about tides. So if you would like to win this book, then please put down in the comments something that you've enjoyed about this video and then hashtag Tideline Art. And then in a couple of weeks, I will see, I'll do a little draw and see who has won this book Tides and I will send it to you. So thank you very much again to David and Emir Martin Roberts for sending this book and I have read some of it and I'm actually halfway through it and I'm really loving it. My understanding of tides is a lot greater than it was before, believe me. So that is that. And I wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you who adopted a Thames orphan. And it feels really empty here now because I did actually um, send out all these orphans about a week ago. So if you haven't received your orphan yet, um, he or she is on the way and thank you very, very much for giving them a home. I'm sure they're going to be very happy. Send me a picture of them in their new home and I can do a little, a little um, feature about the new homes of the Thames orphans. I'm sure that there will be more to come. So if you didn't get a chance to adopt one, I'm pretty sure that there will be more soon. So I think that's about it now. So I'd like to say a massive thank you again for watching. Thank you for sharing in the onion bottle joy. Thank you for all your comments and your suggestions and feedback. Thank you for watching my videos and a huge thanks to everybody who has donated to my Ko-fi account. I really, really appreciate it. And so I would like to wish you all a wonderful week ahead and I'm very much looking forward to seeing you again very soon for more fantastic mudlarking adventures. Thank you. Bye-bye. This beautiful, beautiful, perfect little onion bottle. It's a, a once in a lifetime experience to pull something like this out of the mud. Probably dates the 17th century, but the person who dropped it would never have imagined that someone could get so excited about this. But this is just so beautiful. Thank you, River Thames.
Well, I was hoping that Squirrel was going to show up today so we could have his usual star appearance at the end of the video, but we're having to make do with a body double today because he hasn't shown up. And so here is the body double found in the River Thames. Well, hello. Who's that then? Who's that little squirrel friend? Hmm, didn't seem too impressed. <laughs> 